Hi, welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. And in this module, we're gonna be looking at the dot plot by MAQ software. Now you may remember that we've actually covered a dot plot in the past, but this one is a little bit more unique. It is by, of course, designed by MAQ software. And what's unique about it is it allows you to see distributions of dots across multiple categories. So you can see in the screenshot here that we have uh, different standards, first, second, and third standard and then different sections, section A, B, and C, both categorized and showing distributions across those. So it allows you to see those multiple categories all within inside of a single chart, while you can also have the bubble size and orientation adjustable as well. So the bubble size, of course, is gonna be something that you can set based on some kind of metric you have. And then if the bubbles are at least initially too small, you can actually change that underneath the format paintbrush section. As far as orientation, you wanna change it between vertical and horizontal. You can actually change the chart to be completely different orient oriented as you uh, design it inside the format section. So we'll take a look at that, but let's go ahead and get started. Let's walk you through how you can import and use the dot plot by MAQ software. And then we'll walk you through an example of using it inside of the Power BI desktop. All right, so our first stop in this example, of course, is to go get some data that we wanna use for this example. So we're gonna go up to the get data section to get started. We'll select Excel. And then I'm going to use this file here called Regional Sales. All right, I'll choose that file and hit Open. And then from inside of this workbook, you'll see that we have a spreadsheet here called Sales. And you can see the data that's coming in, what it looks like. And uh, we're going to go ahead and bring this in. But we have multiple categories that we're going to be able to drill into deeper into our data. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Load to bring this data now into the Power BI desktop. So our next step is going to be to bring in our custom visual. Now you can do that by either hitting the little ellipses in the visualization pane or by hitting from store up in the top ribbon underneath custom visuals. So we'll select from store, give that a second to load. All right, so once the visualizations pane opens, you can go ahead and search here for dot plot. And like I mentioned earlier, there are multiple dot plots inside of Power BI, so you can see at least three of them here as of the moment of me recording this, but the one that we're gonna use for this example is the one here called dot plot by MAQ software. So select this one and it will add it, so you will click add and it will add it into our visualization section here, and we can start to use that for our example. Now for this example, what we wanna do is we wanna bring in and see different types of categorical data. It might be something like the year, we might look at something like the sales territory. We wanna bring in multiple types of information about our data and be able to see it on the dot plot. So we're gonna bring in the dot plot here. I'm gonna make it uh, really take up the majority of our screen. And we're gonna start by bringing in some of the information. Let's start with something like the quantity. And I'm going to bring the quantity in underneath the bubble size. And then I'll also bring in sales underneath the value section here. So right now you see there's no categorical data, so it's not showing anything on the graph yet. I also want to bring in the year, and I'm going to bring the year underneath the axis category one. Okay, so you can start to see years appear here on the bottom. And then we're going to bring in the sales territory underneath axis category two. Now you can see as you do that, that it does actually have multiple categories of information you're looking at. We see multiple levels or multiple entries for years here, and then the sales territory for each of those values that are brought back. You can also actually have multiple bubbles. So if, say for example, I wanted to see a more specific deep dive into the different districts, I can bring in district underneath the legend section, and then you'll notice the legend section appear up top here. And then there are new entries showing up inside of our dot plot, but we're also seeing that they're color coded based on the different in this case, states. The district is equivalent to a state here. All right, now there's a bunch of things that we may want to play around with underneath the format paintbrush section. If you look under the format paintbrush, you'll see things like underneath orientation, you can turn it from being vertical to horizontal, so that way you can kind of look at it in a different style. You can also, if you turn it horizontal, you can change the way that the text appears. Because right now the text is appearing left to right, but if you wanted to, you could actually flip the text as well. And you can see if you flip the text that it makes it go up and down or bottom up as well. So it's another way to kind of work with the data and see it from a different angle if you do choose to flip it horizontal versus vertical. Okay. You can also turn on or off the axes. So for example, if I want to turn off the Y axis where you see the sales, I can turn that off. And if I turn it back on, you can also kind of see there's several things you can do to adjust it. You can adjust the range of where it begins and ends. And you can also adjust things like the formatting of it. So if I wanted to change the sale, the, the name here, the label from sales to something else, I could change that. And I could also increase the text size as well if I wanted to. I can bump that up a couple notches. You can as well also bump up the title as well. All right, so you can do the same thing on the x-axis here. If I go down to x-axis, I can bump up the text size of that just a tad if I wanted to. 
You could also turn off the title. That's the same thing you could also do on the y-axis. So I may want to turn off the title on both of those. And if I'm just really focused on the data and I can kind of figure out what those are, I can figure out those are years. And then you can, again, change some of the formatting of this. You can uh, change the color if you wanted to. So you have some flexibility there. Underneath the axis category, here you can have the ability to actually do things like change the splits that you have. So you can see the split labels. If I turn those off, you'll see that it actually moved the categories from above to below, which is kind of nice. I kind of like to be able to see those next to each other so I can see what we're really looking at side by side. So that's your, your choice, whether or not you want to split the labels between the top and bottom, or you want to merge them together, you can do that as well. All right. Underneath the data colors, here's where you can actually adjust the colors that are being used for my legend. So in this case, each of the states have a different color, but you can adjust those to be specific colors if you wanted them to be. In my case, I'm happy with how they are. And moving along, you'll see you can also adjust the background banding. So you can kind of see there's an alternating row color here, or column color in this case. You can actually turn that off if you wanted to, so it has the same color throughout. Or you can adjust that a little bit more. If you dig into the background banding, you can change the color alternating that, it's, that you're seeing. So you can kind of adjust that a little bit. You can also change the darkness of that banding if you wanted to, and you can change the color as well. That's what's underneath the background banding section. The tick marks have to do with the tick marks you see down here on the bottom. If I go underneath tick marks and I want to just turn off the tick marks altogether, you'll notice that the tick marks now no longer show up underneath the year. I kind of like those okay so you can see where they begin and end, but I might want to change the color of those tick marks. So you can do things like change the color of them here. You can also change the category tick marks. So that's the secondary tick marks that you see. Here I've turned them off. I'll turn them back on. You can also change the color, like I said. So if you want to make them more clear, you might want to make them black so it's very easy to dif differentiate them here. And so now I can read them a little bit better. So those are the tick marks. Those are the ones that have to do with the categorical splits that you see inside of each section here. All right, that's the tick marks underneath grid lines. So grid lines, well, you can turn the grid lines off, of course. So you can see as soon as I did that, there's no longer grid lines appearing. You can also take the, uh, to change the thickness if you wanted to. You can turn off the categorical grouping that it's done. So those lines that appear between each of those, you can turn that off if you wanted to. You can also change the color of those lines if you wanted to. Maybe perhaps you uh, want to turn the lines off so it merges and kind of flows a little bit better between them. You don't necessarily need the lines because you have the banding color that's appearing. You can do that as well. And a little bit further down, underneath the grid lines, let's go underneath bubbles. Underneath bubbles here, you can actually adjust the size of the bubbles, which is clearly needed for this example. Right now, these bubbles are so small, it's really hard to actually read it. So what we probably want to do is bump up the bubble size here, maybe it's something like 20. And then we can make the low or the, the, the lower end, the minimum radius size, something like 5, so we can see those a little bit better as well. And so now we can actually see those a little bit better. And by the way, whenever you interact with this, you can hover above any one of these dots in the dot plot. You can even select them to do cross-highlighting. So if I had anything else on the chart and I selected an item, it would do cross-filtering or highlighting so that the other items are filtered down. Okay, So that's a nice capability that's built in as well. You can also do things like increase the transparency of the bubbles. So you can see you can make them a little bit more transparent if you wanted to. I'm going to leave them as is. You can also change the hover color. So you notice that there's a red circle that goes around it. If you wanted to change that to something else, maybe perhaps blue, you can change that to a blue. And you can see when you hover above an item that it shows in blue instead of the red that we saw a moment ago. That's what's under the bubble section. Final section here is the legend section. Underneath the legend section, you can move where the legend is at. Right now I have it in the top, but you could move it to maybe perhaps you wanted to move it to the right. So you can see it like that. Maybe it doesn't make sense like that. So I'm going to move it back to where it's at. You can also increase the size of the legend, so you can bump that up a little bit. And you can also do things like change the text. So right now it says district in here. If I can see these are clearly states and people more recognize them as states, I can change that here to state if I wanted to. You can also change the display units. So in the display units here, I might want to change this to something like thousands. And you can see there when I do that, that the quantity shown here is a little bit easier to read. Before, whenever I had it set to auto, it was zero million to zero million. Well, that's clearly I don't have a million dollars of sales here. So I can change that to something like thousands, and then I can much clearly see what we're actually measuring here. You can also change the color of that if you wanted to. I'm probably not going to keep the change of the color, but you could change it to red if you wanted to. Really, the gray or the black was probably fine as it was. So I'm going to flip that back to where it was. You can also change if you had any decimal places that you wanted to display in that. You could do that. In this case, there is no decimal places needed. Below that, underneath the legends, legend section, there are several other sections, but really every one of the Power BI custom visuals has these sections, things like the title, the background, the lock aspect, all of those are just in every one of the custom visuals. So I'm not going to spend too much time on those, other than I might want to just turn off the, the, the title here. 
You can see the title says sales and quantity by year and sales territory. Not really necessary for what we're doing here because you can kind of figure out what we're looking at just by looking at the data a little bit. But if I wanted to, I could clearly kind of change that as well. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this custom visual. This is an interesting one. It's a nice dot plot way to show categorical data distributed out. And I look forward to showing you our next custom visual in our next module. Thanks a lot.